All right, Breaker Broke 23. So today in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I integrated my Blue Dento B2 high resolution Bluetooth receiver to my old school Alpine 9857. Okay, in order to make this work, we are going to need an old school CD controller deck or CD changer controller deck, I should say. So this is my old Alpine 9857. Um, you can do this with an old uh, Kenwood, a Sony, a Pioneer, I guess even a JVC. I don't think those were all that common back then, but anyway, get you a good, a good CD uh, changer controller head unit. And I like these decks anyway, because sonically they sound a lot better than any of the new stuff that's out on the market. Um, for my use, I mean, I wouldn't even care if I, you know, pulled one or bought one off eBay that didn't even have uh, an operating cassette mechanism or CD mechanism because basically we're just going to use the deck for the AM FM tuner. And then, of course, most importantly, the, um, the Bluetooth unit. Now, I know that some of you guys, oh, well, like I put Bluetooth in my car before and it doesn't sound very good. Well, Probably because you were integrating it like this. You were using the 3.5 millimeter stereo jack and plugging it into the front of your head unit. And I mean, that's a quick and easy way to do it, but they sound terrible. And in my experience, it discourages a lot of people from uh, using Bluetooth in their car. Another thing too, you know, you can buy like Bluetooth decks uh, um, or, you know, modern Bluetooth decks, or you can buy Bluetooth converters. Uh, there's a bunch of them out on the market. The problem is the volume and audio quality of the Bluetooth is nowhere near the output levels of the head unit itself. So meaning you would say, like, like say you listen to your uh, CD player or your FM stereo, uh, or your cassette deck at say like a volume level of 10 okay then when you hook up your bluetooth to it all of a sudden now you're having to go up into the 20s all right and it sounds terrible because basically all your amplification all the headroom in your amplifier has already been exhausted at this type of a output level so it sounds terrible and of course then when you uh, unlatch your bluetooth receiver it blasts you out of your car because your volume is so high so by doing it this way, we get not only uh, a better audio quality, but an audio quality that more matches uh, the head unit properly, therefore giving you um, about 100% uh, better Bluetooth experience. In this demonstration, actually I use this setup in my Sequoia and I'm extremely happy with it. I have an old school CDA 9857. I mean, it's not too old school. It's like early 2000s, like 2005-ish, I believe, something like that. Uh, this works really well with an 80s, 90s um, CD changer controller deck. And like I said earlier, the audio quality is uh, far superior to anything that's out nowadays. So we want a CD changer controller deck and we want a good Bluetooth receiver with uh, good output. I personally use the Blue Dento B2. This is one of my favorite Bluetooth receivers, especially for mobile operation. Uh, it's a high resolution Bluetooth receiver. I'll leave links to that down below. There's also a promo code at bluedento.com to get some money off there. And you can actually customize this to, to uh, ID uh, what you would like it to say. So you could say like Bob's Bluetooth or something like that, or my car or something. But anyway, um, here's what we're going to need to make all this happen. All right. So you have a CD controller head unit and you're wondering if I can even get an adapter for this deck. And so my recommendation is do this, go to eBay, and punch in your model number of your cassette deck. And I'm just gonna go off the top of my head. Like, uh, let's do like a Pioneer uh, KEM or KEH 5500. I, I can't remember how that went, but anyway, punch in Pioneer 5500 um, auxiliary adapter, okay? And something like this should show up. Now, once in a while, you will, you will find an auxiliary adapter that gives you this input 
with this end. So you'll have like one of these and then one of these. This is not what you want. This is the improper impedance. It's the, it's the improper everything, quite honestly. These sound terrible. Do not. I mean, stay away from this kind of an input on anything. Okay. What you're going to want is you're going to want RCA input. This is the clean, low level line inputs. All right. So make sure your deck that you're going to use, you can actually purchase one of these. These are fairly cheap. You can usually get these for under 10 bucks. Don't worry about the price. Don't worry that it has doesn't have fancy schmancy twisted pair um, RCAs or anything like that because that's just basically hogwash. So you're going to have one of these and a CD changer controller deck. Let's go to the next step. All right. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, Blue Dento BLT HD to just show you what's on the back panel here. Understand this has a, I mean, this is an awesome uh, Bluetooth receiver. The antenna is on the front. If you have a Bluetooth receiver that you like and the antenna is on the front, this is okay. I run the B2 because of the display and the rear antenna port, but let's, we can use this for right now. All right, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to we're going to want to do a few things to integrate this to your uh, cassette deck. A, we need the uh, RCA auxiliary input adapter, so we're going to plug that into here. All right, now we need to give this power. Now these units run off a five volt wall wart adapter, an AC adapter for the most part. Okay, and so what I've done here. Now I have all this hardwired in my vehicle actually, but this is external stuff because I do a lot of on uh, bench experimenting. So what I've done with this is uh, I'll leave links to these down below. You can get these on eBay for like a few dollars a piece or maybe buy them in bulk. I buy, I used to buy these in bulk where I'd buy like half a dozen at a time for like 12 or 15 bucks. But this is basically 12 volt uh, input on this end and then USB 5 volt output on this end. And these make great car chargers. Um, but we're not going to use this as a car charger in this application. We're actually going to use this as just a 12 to 5 volt power source. So this will be a, a 5 volt power supply, basically. What I've done is on the tabs here on this, I've soldered and then heat shrunk it. And I have a cable that um, hooks up 12 volts. So this is negative. This is positive. That cable will in turn plug into our power cable. So now we have we have power, we have audio, and then we're going to need an antenna. And like I say, this one has the antenna built into it. The one that I actually have in this kit here has an uh, external antenna. And I have the external antenna right here. This is actually the one I used. What I did is I've used the antenna that comes with the Blue Dental BL, uh, or B2. And I used a SMA to SMA micro coax adapter here. And I will leave a link to that as well. This is about a 12 inch long adapter. What we're going to do is we're just going to stuff this through and hide this in your dashboard. And don't worry about it being in your dashboard around a bunch of metal and wiring and, and uh, stuff like that. Because you'll still get like at least a 40 foot range for the most part. I... I you know, it kind of depends on what phone or what device I'm I'm using to transmit my Bluetooth. But, um, you know, in the dashboard, this stock OEM antenna with this extension cable will um, do the job. Okay, so we have power here. We have our USB cable that goes from here, from our little power supply, we're calling it through the back of my little pocket, and I just drilled some holes in the back of the pocket, if you can see those back there. Ran my power cable up, and here's what it looks like. So I have five volts going in. This is my antenna adapter. This is SMA, uh, like a 12 inch adapter. Let's see here, where is my antenna? I was gonna show you the antenna back here. There it is. And then of course the antenna's back here. All right, I have my RCAs that come out of my Bluetooth receiver. They plug into my auxiliary input adapter. Now on your stereo, let me just jump to this. 
you'll have generally on these type of decks, you have a source button. That's your on off button in case you're not familiar with them. And you can go like FM, hit it again. You'll have your CD or cassette. And then you have your auxiliary. And some decks will let you program what your auxiliary says. This Alpine will not. This, this Alpine says either AUX, auxiliary spelled out this way, TV or game. And I just went with auxiliary. It would have been cool if you could program it to say, you know, Bluetooth or something like that. But, you know, each individual deck uh, is different. And then that's how you can toggle back through it. Okay, now you're wondering, they're like, yeah, but how do I turn this on and off? Well, I'll show you. All right, this is the exciting part for me as a old installer, the wiring. All right, we have our auxiliary plug plugged into the back of the Alpine. We have the RCAs from that auxiliary plug to the Bluetooth receiver. I've strung the antenna wire and the power wire through the back pocket, the back of the pocket. I've got it hooked up here. Now what we need to do is we need to power up this little power supply unit. Now the one that I have in my vehicle, this is all heat shrunk. This is in one big piece of heat shrink right here um, for two reasons. To insulate it so it doesn't rub up against any piece of metal or anything like that in the dash, which would be no big deal anyway because I have like a one amp fuse in line. But we don't want that to happen. And I also never want this to come unplugged. Now, some USB cords fit tighter than others. This one's a nice tight fit. However, like I say, in my unit, I have a more permanent installation with this power supply and all this in just one giant piece of heat shrink. Now, you can power this power supply up a few different ways. You could take the positive, well, first of all, we're gonna hook up the negative to a negative source, all right? Where it's either gonna be chassis ground, you could even ground it to the back of the stereo if you want. Uh, I suggest on just grounding this to the same ground wire that your head unit is grounded to. All right, now, how do we turn this on and off? This is kind of the cool part because we have several options here. We could take the power wire that goes to this and we could hook it up to our accessory lead being the red wire here on the car stereo. And that makes it so every time you turn the key on and off in the vehicle, it will turn your um, Bluetooth receiver on and off. Okay, that works out just fine. You can also hook up to your power antenna lead. Now some stereos have a power, a separate power antenna lead and a separate amp remote turn on lead. Now you're not gonna wanna use the power antenna lead because the power antenna lead is only energized when you have your FM tuner on. So when you go to your little source switch up front and you flip to tape, or to auxiliary, it's gonna actually shut power off. And then you're gonna lose power to this little uh, power supply. So what I recommend is hooking it up to the, uh, to the amp remote lead, the amplifier remote lead. Meaning every time you turn this deck on and off, it sends 12 volts to the amp remote lead for your auxiliary power amplifiers. Every car stereo has an amp remote lead, all right? and I would suggest hooking it up to that. Then every time, and it's kind of a cool custom thing, every time you turn your stereo on and off, it turns your Bluetooth receiver on and off. And it's just as easy as that. So the positive lead from your power supply, hook it up to, to your amp remote lead or to your switch 12 volt lead coming from your vehicle. Now, Mike, I'm a little worried. Won't that Bluetooth receiver burn up my, my stereo? Isn't that too much? of a current draw for that. Well, I'm gonna show you that it's not. This power supply just in resting mode pulls 13 milliamps, all right? I am going to grab my little tablet here. I'm gonna hit play. Now I'm gonna hit play, not rewind, okay. This pulls 30 milliamps. Now these decks are usually good to about a half an amp, about 500 milliamps. Some older ones will even go up to an amp, amp and a half. But all that being said, this is not going to have any significant draw on this deck at all. This would be like this deck um, would be turning on electro uh, an electronic crossover or something. I mean, this thing does not pull 
uh, hardly anything compared to what is generally used on this. If you're already using your amplifier out remote leads like I am, and you don't feel good about using that lead, then yeah, just go to the, uh, the red switched wire. It's as easy as that. So to our power supply, we have chassis ground. We have power to it, either the amp remote turn on or the switched. We now have RCA line level. We have our antenna plugged in. So uh, let's uh, let's test it out. Let's see if uh, if this thing works. All right. So we've got the kit switched back around. Antennas tightened up. Everything's good to go. Now, when you go to install this, you could put like a little tiny micro strip of Velcro, like maybe right along the front. You could maybe wedge some paper in there, something like that. I don't recommend double stick because then if you ever need to service this, it's going to be a major pain to get it out. And then I put it in like this and then I push it down and set it in there so it stays. It looks good. You know, you've got a really nice clean installation and it won't bang around or flop around. Uh, when you're driving. So let's see here. I am going to uh, cut power from my power supply here for a second. What this will do is this will represent me going in and turning my key on and off. I already have it paired to this old school tab two. We have our auxiliary and that is where we need to be for all this to talk to each other. Okay, I hit that on my tablet, I just oh, I just hit the tablet and uh, I highlighted a song. I'm gonna hit play. And there we have it. Okay, we're gonna wrap this video up, but I wanna show you about that uh, equal volume level that I'm talking about because that's what's so important in doing all of this anyway. By having the proper uh, input levels and everything and a good high fidelity, high resolution receiver, you're going to have the best sounding Bluetooth unit on the block for sure. So what I want to show you is I want to demonstrate why I'm doing it this way and also why this sucks so terribly bad. All right. Remember with what I was talking about earlier, when you have that 3.5 millimeter jack, you have to turn the volume up so high on your stereo. Then when you go back to FM or cassette or CD, then it blows you out of the car. And by doing it this way with a CD controller deck, auxiliary uh, input, the company or this the, the manufacturers made up for that loss in preamp signal because those 17 to 25 foot din cords you have a you know you have some signal loss when you're when you're talking about RCA line level output we're talking about millivolts not watts so when you run a long cable like that you need to have a little bit more sensitivity to the preamp section in this to make it so your CD player sounds just as good as your AM FM cassette or CD tuner in this so let's do this um, real quick, I'm going to set volume control at 15. I'm going to go over here, make sure volume control is at 15. Okay. Now I'm kind of, I'm going to kind of go back and forth between uh, modes because of copyright. I don't want to get busted for copyright on FM, and at any given time, I don't know, I don't know what they're playing. So I have an antenna plugged into this. Uh, this is all booted up. We're ready to go. Volume control on both input sources are exactly the same. They're at 15. Let's, let's do it. Okay, so there's our volume. How are you doing, man? Hey, Matt. Hey, how's it going, guys? Yeah. And there's our volume control on the FM tuner. Um, I wish I hit it for music, but that's all right. That allowed me a little bit of copyright free content there. Anyway, what you noticed is they are relatively the same. And depending on the output of the uh, audio on the radio station and on your cassette or your internal CD, this will actually, the Bluetooth will actually be just a hair louder than all of your other uh, sources. Okay, worst case scenario, it's gonna be exactly the same volume. Let's play that again. 
No disc. I knew that. Okay. 15. Pac-12 Conference. This is going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. There you go. And I'm looking at UCLA. Okay. Well, I hope that helps you guys out. Uh, if you have a new modern vehicle with an infotainment center in it, this is not going to work for you at all. You're stuck with that, you know, that B-rate sounding head unit you have. Um, however, if you have an older vehicle and you can put aftermarket car stereos in it, you know, this would do you well. If you have an old school CD controller deck, maybe a cassette player deck in your garage you haven't used since the 90s or since you first met your wife or whatever, bring it back out. See if you can get an auxiliary plug for it. Buy you a nice high resolution Bluetooth receiver. You are going to be styling. You're going to have that great killer sound of your old school head unit. And you're going to have the new convenience of high resolution Bluetooth absolutely the best way to go all right you guys if you have questions or comments please leave those down below if you have not yet subscribed to this channel i'd appreciate it if you'd do that because on this channel we have lots of fun with bluetooth stay tuned for more cheers